Hello everyone, welcome to this video on modeling with trigonometric functions. So we have here, this is question one from the textbook. We have the temperature in Greece per month, the mean temperature in Greece per month. And we're going to use, first we're going to do a manual process to find a, a model that describes this temperature. And then we're going to use our calculators to do it and we're going to compare them. So just looking along here, this is what I've scoped out already, is that the highest temperature occurs um, in July, and that's 27 degrees. So the maximum temperature is 27 degrees, and it occurs in July. And the minimum temperature is 14 degrees, and that occurs in February. Okay, so using all this information, we need to find a sine wave. We need to find the amplitude, um, the value of B, which affects the period, the horizontal translation, and the vertical translation. So let's start off with the uh, amplitude. Okay, so the amplitude is the distance from the principal axis to a peak or to a trough. So let's think about a sine wave. It's going to look something like that. Here's our principal axis. That's our value of D. And this is going to be our amplitude, isn't it? So maybe let's find D first. Okay, now D, the value of D will always be halfway between a, the peak and the trough. So D is always halfway between the maximum and the minimum. So our value of D is going to be the maximum, which is 27, plus 14, and then divide that by 2. So that's going to give us 41 divided by 2. That's going to be 20.5. That's our value of D. That's the principal axis. And then the amplitude is, well, how far is it from the principal axis, which is 20.5, to the peak or to the trough? Okay, and so what we can see is from, from here, it's at, what, 20.5 and we go up to 27. That's going up six and a half. Okay, so six and a half there. And then from 20.5 down to 14, that's going down six and a half. And so our amplitude, our value of A is 6.5. All right, in order to find the value of B, B, well, well, if we think of this wave, right, okay, it's, it's months, isn't it? And there's 12 months in a year, which means it's gonna have a period of 12. The wavelength, the distance for one wave, I'm going to draw it again, is 12. That distance is 12 units. From here to here, it's going to be 12. And so in order to find the value of B, what that means is 2 pi divided by B equals 12. All right, remember, two, the wavelength is 2 pi on B. The wavelength is 12, therefore 2 pi on B equals 12. Rearranging this, we'll get uh, 2 pi on 12, which is pi on 6. Okay, we're almost done. So we've got our values of A, B, and D. And I've left C to last because it is a little bit tricky to find. If we think of the sine wave, it goes like this, doesn't it? Okay, this, this, is, this is how it goes, all right? So it starts um, in the, at the, on the principal axis and it goes for a maximum and then comes down for a minimum. Okay, so if we think, where is the principal axis? And the principal axes, all right, if we look at the distance between a maximum and a minimum, okay, a maximum and a minimum, this point in time, all right, um, like if, if we were to, let's think about the, what the graph of this is actually going to look like. And let's draw that and then I can, I think I can describe it better. So it, all, it pretty much starts at the low. It's starting at here, then we have the minimum and then it's coming up for the maximum and then it's coming back down. So this is what the graph is going to look like against um, against time. His, his time is 12, his time is 1. Okay, this is what the graph is going to look like. And so we want to say, well, how much have we shifted the sine function to the right? Okay, normally, normally the sine function starts here, but we've shifted it to the right. How, how far have we shifted it to, uh, to the right there? So... What we do know, right, is that the max here, the maximum time, um, well, the maximum temperature is 27 degrees and occurs when time is seven. Okay, so when time is seven, the temperature is 27. And we know the minimum temperature occurs when time is two and is 14 degrees. And so that means the time value of this point is gonna be exactly halfway between the maximum and halfway between the minimum. Okay, halfway between 7 and halfway between 2. So if I go 7 plus 2 divided by 2, that's 9 on 2, which is 4.5. This value of T 
is 4.5, approximately. All right, if we're thinking of our wave there, here's where it's starting. Here's the first trough. I'm just modeling it straight off this data. Here's the first trough, and then we have our peak. And, uh, and so then you can see, right, is if we were to start here, then you've got your peak, and then you would have your trough, and that would be the sine wave. And so the amount that it's moved over to the right is it's moved over 4.5 units. Okay, so C is 4.5, which means the sine function that describes this wave, based on our, our manual prediction here, is 6.5 sine um, of pi on 6x take 4.5, take because we're moving it to the right, and then plus 20.5. If we were to graph this, we can use it to approximate the temperature throughout the year in Greece. Okay, so that's part A. That's how we do it. Let's look like how we're thinking about these things manually, um, sort of working backwards from, um, from a given model, isn't it? And so there's quite a, bit of, uh, uh, quite a bit of intuition required there. Let's look at how we can use our calculator. So what you're gonna do is gonna go into statistics menu, and I've gone ahead and done this already just to save time in the video. So on, on the left-hand column here, I've listed all the temperatures. Okay, so 15, 14, 15, 18, etc. And then here's the months where one is January, two is February, three is March, etc. All the way down. Okay, and then if we go to what, what we want to do, so we're in this mode, we should go into um, graph and we just want to check our settings. Okay, and what we want to have, we want to have list one is going to be the y-axis, that's the temperature. If you think of our graph down here, we have the temperature on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. So let's go into settings and just check that out. We want to have a scatter plot. Um, so for list two, the, the, the x-axis, I want that to say uh, list two because that's where I've got my time. All of my time is in list two and my y-axis is list one. So I'm gonna keep that as list one. So that's all good. And I'm gonna press graph one. And then you can see we've got that beautiful sine curve. But now watch this, we can go calc and we can choose any model to fit it. Now we're not interested in these ones, we're interested in a sine curve. So if we press that and we've got A is 6.14. Okay, so reasonably close to our 6.5. We've got B is 0.574. Um, I think you'll find that's reasonably close to pi on six. Uh, C, our value of C is quite different. Um, now that should be negative by the way, because let's take 4.5. So quite different. And our value of D is quite close. So it's a reasonably similar model just based off of our, um, our predictions here. So this, this is a pretty accurate way of conceiving it. Now, of course, the calculator is gonna consider the best way uh, or the best match of the data to the model. And it's never perfect, no model ever is. So we've explored two processes there, haven't we? This is, this is a great skill because it's very, like it requires a great amount of intuition and you're thinking about uh, basically the sine wave and how it's moved around backwards. This, I mean, just punching, pushing a bunch of buttons. So there we go, that's a new skill, that's 4E, that's modeling with trigonometric functions.